But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. The unknown caused great fear in the children of men. Israelites, there is nothing unknown the Most High has not made known to his people. The issue the children of man have is that the synagogue of Satan has interfered with your relationship with the Most High. Because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, Satan used his disciples to keep the people ignorant to the affairs of the Most High. Due to a lack of knowledge, the people perish. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. The Most High always show himself strong through his prophets and the righteous. The Most High would not make a people in his image and likeness and not reveal who he is and his true nature to his people. If the Most High do not show his people how to serve him in the spirit and in truth, how can he hold them accountable? The Most High has raised prophets and teachers in every generation to help his people understand his nature and laws. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. The people of the Most High do not listen to the teachers and prophets. Most enjoy listening to seducing spirits that teach doctrines of devils. Due to the demonic doctrines and the people's rebellious nature, many have strayed far from the Most High that when the prophets are gathering the people, they reject their guidance. The Messiah is a prime example. Many rejected the Messiah, the Most High sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Their rejection is solely on his outward appearance and his teachings. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. The Messiah came to teach the Israelites about their Elohim. Satan transformed the destiny of the Messiah into a God in religion that is sent to save the world. I'm not sure why the Most High would send his people a messianic God when he is their Elohim. The very first commandment state there should be no other gods before the Most High. The Messiah's mission was to educate the people of the Most High about the laws statutes and commandments of the most high as well as guiding the lost sheep back to the most high for i came down from heaven not to do mine own will but the will of him that sent me and this is the father's will which hath sent me that of all which he hath given me i should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day and this is the will of him that sent me that every one which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. The Most High never intended for his people to start worshiping the Messiah. Even the Messiah said to Satan in the book of Matthew and Luke that the people of the Most High should worship the Most High, the Father. And Jesus answered and said unto him, 
Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Anyone who teach doctrines that are contrary to the doctrines of religion, the workers of iniquity, slander in the beast culture, in the synagogue of Satan, hates them. The people accuse the anointed teachers of having a demon because the beast culture hates truth. To the anointed teachers of the Most High, the workers of iniquity accuse the real Messiah of having a demon also. Israelites, do not be afraid to speak truth and further investigate the deep things of the Most High, even if it makes you appear to be insane to the people who lack understanding. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father and ye do dishonor me. They laugh and mock Noah when he was warning the people in his generation. The Messiah said, if the world hates you, remember that it hated him first. The kingdom of darkness use religion to keep the deep things of the Most High a mystery. Satan do not want the people of the Most High to know what goes on behind the scenes. If the people don't know the truth, they will continue to perish from a lack of knowledge. Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. For those of us in the awakening that comes from a Christian background, the religious leaders always teach that those who accept Jesus would go to heaven and those who did not would go to hell. They describe hell as a place where a person is tormented. The workers of iniquity associate hell with fire. With the people being afraid to spend eternity being tormented, they forge a covenant with the false messiah. Fear-mongering is how Satan get the sheep to accept many doctrines and forge evil covenants in religion. The afterlife is nothing like the workers of iniquity describe to forge evil covenants with the sheep. The place the pastors in religion call hell is not the same with the lake of fire. The lake of fire is where those whose names is not written in the book of life go after the great judgment day. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. When a person die, they do not end up in the lake of fire or heaven. Religion make it seem as if when a person dies, his or her fate is determined at death. If that were true, then there wouldn't be a need for the great judgment day if everyone's fate is determined at death. When a physical death takes place, the way you live your life would determine where you spend the afterlife until judgment day. The Bible give us a brief account of what happens when a person dies. The scripture said the spirit goes to be with the most high and the body remain here on earth. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. The scriptures do not give us adequate information to help us find closure when our loved ones die. Because many of us do not know about the afterlife, we spend a lot of time mourning our loved ones. Many people struggle with death because they don't have sufficient knowledge that give them peace. Israelites, your spirit do not die. Your spirit continue to live. Your spirit is what makes your human body alive. Once your spirit separates from your body, your spirit goes to the afterlife and your body remains here, just as Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 said. For those of you who need closure, I hope this message gives you the closure that you need. Israelites and indigenous black people, know that once you're gone from here, your spirit continues to live, but in another dimension until judgment day. Israelites, the Most High reveals what happens in the afterlife to Enoch in a vision. Enoch has taught the children of men everything the Most High showed him. The issue is that the synagogue of Satan interfere by adding and taking away from the scriptures. In addition to tampering with the scriptures, they hide books with important information from the public. The books that manage to find its way to the public, the synagogue of Satan discredit. The synagogue of Satan will show us what is hidden in the scriptures. They keep in their secret vaults in movies, music, and many other ways to make themselves appear to have great wisdom. The Most High would not create us in his image and likeness and not reveal to us his nature and how he want us to live. 
The Most High always instruct his prophets to write down what they saw in a vision to help the next generation. Now, my son Methuselah, all these things I speak unto thee and write for thee. To thee I have revealed all and have given thee books of everything. Preserve, my son Methuselah, the books written by thy father, that thou mayest transmit them to future generations. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The Most High instruct John, Jeremiah, Moses, Daniel, and many other prophets to write down their visions, to transfer the wisdom and understanding to the next generation. The scriptures are a collection of visions the Most High gave to his prophets. Remember, the scriptures reveal to us that the Most High speak to his people in dreams and visions. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. If you want to know about the afterlife, read the book of Enoch. The book of Genesis revealed to us the first account of a spiritual death. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of good and evil, they suffered a spiritual death. The book of Genesis also give us an account of the first physical death that leads to the afterlife. When Cain slew Abel, Cain and Abel are brothers from the same mother and father. Adam and Eve is Cain and Abel's parents, according to the scriptures. There are many doctrines concerning Cain's bloodline and legacy. Cain was an indigenous black man, and the Bible confirm. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Cain is not from the seed of the fallen. It wasn't until the time of Jared, the fallen angels began to take the daughters of men for wives to bear children. Jared is Enoch's father. Cain was the first man born from the womb of a woman. The book of Jubilees also give confirmation of Adam and Eve are the parents to Cain, Abel, and Awan, their sister. And in the third week in the second Jubilee, she gave birth to Cain, and in the fourth, she gave birth to Abel, and in the fifth, she gave birth to her daughter, Awan. Cain doesn't descend from the seed of the serpent. The scriptures never said Satan fathered Cain. Cain was a wicked indigenous black male. Black people kill each other every day in the beast system. Some laugh at their own people's demise. You don't have to be from the seed of the fallen to be wicked. Cain killed his brother out of jealousy. When the Most High sent the flood to destroy the earth, the Most High destroyed the sons of men who were wicked with the seed of the fallen. Israelites do not associate wickedness with only the seed of the fallen. The seed of men are wicked as well. That is why the spirit called Mastema said to the Most High, allow some of the seed of the fallen to remain under his authority. He wouldn't be able to judge the sons of men for their wickedness if some do not remain. And the chief of the spirits, Mastema, came and said, Lord, creator, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And he said, Let the tenth part of them remain before him, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. Cain's descendants are indigenous black people. Cain married his sister, Awan. The book of Jubilee confirmed. The only mention of a wand in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 4. The verse said Cain knew his wife and bore a son named Enoch. Cain's son Enoch is not the same with Enoch who descend from Seth's bloodline. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And Cain took Awan, his sister, to be his wife, and she bare him Enoch at the close of the fourth jubilee. 
And in the first year of the first week of the fifth Jubilee, houses were built on the earth and Cain built a city and called its name after the name of his son Enoch. The beginning to Cain's wrath was when the Most High did not accept his offering. Cain allowed the spirit of jealousy and anger to overtake him. According to the scriptures, Cain committed the first murder. When Cain murdered his brother Abel, the scripture said the blood of Abel cried out to the Most High from the ground, wanting justice. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. As you have heard from the scriptures, Abel's blood cried out for justice to the Most High. When Cain slew his brother, we read for the first time how the spirit of man separates from his earthly body. Once Abel's body was dead, his spirit continued to live and can petition the Most High. Although the scripture said Abel's blood is seeking justice, it was Abel's spirit that is crying out to the Most High. Remember, your spirit do not die. It continues to live. Majority of you want to know the location to the afterlife. The spirit realm and the physical realm are not the only realms. There are multiple realms parallel to the earth. The book of Enoch revealed there are multiple dimensions. There is a realm for the spirit of the children of men. There is a realm for the angels that sinned. A realm that is a prison for the watchers who sinned. Today we will focus on the realm that holds the spirit of your relatives and friends that transition to the afterlife. The book of Enoch said in the afterlife there is a place reserved for the spirit of the children of men. The scriptures describe the place of being hollowed, deep, wide, and smooth. The scriptures went on to say it is deep and dark to look at. The location where the spirit of men are held in the afterlife is in a mountain and it is divided into four sections. It is in that realm the spirit of the children of men who died assembled. From there, the spirit of the children of men are waiting to be judged on the great day of judgment. Then Raphael answered one of the holy angels who was with me and said unto me, These hollow places have been created for this very purpose that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Ye that all the souls of the children of men shall assemble here, and these places have been made to receive them till the day of their judgment, and till their appointed period, till the period appointed, till the great judgment comes upon them. When death occur, the spirit of man do not go straight to heaven or hell. That is false doctrine coming from the pulpits of Satan's disciples. The realm that is reserved for the spirit of the children of men has four sections separating the spirit of the children of men. In one of the hollowed sections is for the spirit of the children of men who were slain and seeking justice. Everyone who were unjustly murdered on earth, their spirit are in that section in the afterlife. Abel's spirit is among the rest of the children of men in that section crying out. The book of Enoch reveal Abel's spirit continues to cry out to the Most High until all of Cain's descendants are destroyed from the earth. I saw the spirits of the children of men who were dead, and their voice went forth to heaven and made suit. Then I asked Raphael, the angel who was with me, and I said unto him, This spirit, who is it, whose voice goes forth and makes suit? And he answered me, saying, This is the spirit which went forth from Abel whom his brother Cain slew, and he make his suit against him till his seed is destroyed from the face of the earth, and his seed is annihilated from amongst the seed of men. And such a division has been made for the spirits of those who make their suit, who make disclosures concerning their destruction, when they were slain in the days of the sinners. Many of us in this generation have witnessed on many occasions of unjust killings coming from the hands of our enemies as well as from the hands of our families and friends. This generation have witnessed many of our people being slain unjustly by the hands of police officers. The spirit of the children of men who were brutally murdered are in a specific section in the afterlife. The Bible also confirmed the same account the book of Enoch gave us concerning the spirit of the children of men who were unjustly murdered. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. 
Then they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Then white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. The other three sections consist of the spirit of the children of men who were righteous. The scriptures describe that section as to having a bright spring of water. In the same location, in another section, the children of men who were sinners and was not judged, they are held in one section where they are being tormented until the great day of judgment. Then I ask, regarding all the hallowed places, why is one separated from the other? And he answered me, saying, these three have been made that the spirits of the dead might be separated. And this division has been made for the spirits of the righteous in which there is the bright spring of water. And such has been made for sinners when they die and are buried in the earth and judgment has not been executed on them in their lifetime. Here their spirit shall be set apart in this great pain till the great day of judgment and punishment and torment of those who curse forever and retribution for their spirits. There he shall bind them forever. The Bible gave us an account about the life of the rich man and Lazarus, which confirmed the book of Enoch about the afterlife concerning the spirit of the righteous and the sinners. The Bible said when Lazarus died, he went to Abraham's bosom. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. When the rich man died, the scripture said he went to the section reserved for the spirit of men who were sinners. The scriptures in the Bible had the same description with the book of Enoch of the location being a place of torment for the sinners. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. The Bible called the location to where the rich man ended up in the afterlife as hell. If you read the book of Enoch, hell and Sheol, the place of the dead, are not the same. The scripture said the rich man can see Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. This confirmed the righteous and the sinners are in the same location but in a separate section which would confirm the book of Enoch account of the place reserved for all the spirits of the children of men to assemble until judgment day. One location divided into four sections. That is how the rich man was able to see Lazarus and talk to Abraham. Abraham revealed there was a separation between them. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest to thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. If the righteous was in heaven after death, why are they able to see the sinners being tormented? Sheol is a temporary place for the righteous in the afterlife. After judgment day, the righteous will be in eternity with the Most High. I believe the workers of iniquity alter the verse to say hell and flame to further deceive the people into believing the lake of fire and Sheol, the place for the dead, are the same. The lake of fire, many people call hell, is in another dimension, and this judgment place is reserved for the fallen angels, the beasts, the false prophet, Satan, and all the unrepentant children of men. There are many scriptures describing Sheol as the holding place for the dead until judgment day. The last section out of the fourth section is reserved for the spirit of men who are wicked. They are unrepented sinners. According to the book of Enoch, the spirit of these children of men would not be slain in the day of judgment, nor would they be raised. Such has been made for the spirits of men who were not righteous, but sinners, who were completely in transgression and of the transgressors. They shall be companions, but their spirits shall not be slain in the day of judgment, nor shall they be raised from thence. When your body returned to dust, your spirit goes to the afterlife 
passing time until the great judgment day. The scriptures inform us that those who died in the tribulation period, they will be the ones to wake up when the Messiah returns. The children of men who did not die during the tribulation period, but survived, they will reign with the Messiah for a thousand years, along with the children of men who awake in the first resurrection. These individuals will not participate in the second death. Remember, the scripture said it is appointed for men to die once after to judgment. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. When you're gone from the physical realm, the earth, your eternity starts. Everything on earth is temporary. Where you spend eternity is determined on how you live your life on earth. All the spirits of the children of man goes to the place of the dead Sheol. The spirit of man live in Sheol in the afterlife until judgment day. Sheol is divided into four sections. The righteous is separated from the wicked. Yahshua said, if you find your life, you will lose it. And if you lose your life for the sake of the word, you found your life. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Depending on when death occur would determine if you will awake in the first resurrection and reign with Yahshua for a thousand years or awake to judgment. Your eternity is more important than the temporary life you live on earth. The lake of fire is not meant for the children of men. Because of lack of knowledge and the wickedness of the children of men has increased, hell, as the scripture said, has enlarged itself. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. What the scriptures refer to as hell is Sheol. The section that enlarges itself is the section reserved for the sinners and unrepented children of men. Remember, only a remnant shall repent. The place for the spirit of the children of men, Sheol, is not the same with the lake of fire. The lake of fire comes after the great judgment day, which is the second death. Then I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Israelites, everything you want to know, the Most High will reveal it to you. The scripture said everything hidden, the Most High will make known. The reason we lack knowledge, not too many people are seeking the Most High in the beast culture. In addition, religion play a key part in keeping the people of the Most High incompetent about the affairs of the Most High. The Most High revealed truth and shared the mysteries of life to the children of men because the Most High wants all his creation to serve him and worship him, regardless if you stem from the Israelite bloodline or not. The Most High want all of his creation to repent. And as often as I saw, I blessed always the Lord of glory, and I continued to bless the Lord of glory who was wrought great and glorious wonders to show the greatness of his work to the angels and to spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might and praise the great work of his hands and bless him forever. Your life is not over when death occur. Your spirit transition to the afterlife to begin eternity. Being an Israelite is not going to save you. You must live a life according to the will of the Most High to spend eternity with the Most High. If you want to live your best life on earth, good. Just make sure you are living your best life being guided by the Most High instead of the beast system. When death happens, it is a temporary separation between you and your loved ones in the physical realm. In some cases, if your relatives and friends were wicked, then it's a permanent separation. There is a barrier between the righteous and the sinners in the afterlife. 
Israelites and indigenous black people of the world, get to know the most high through a personal relationship. Do not get to know the most high through the beast culture. Remember, the beast system do not know the most high. Strive to be a part of the remnant. Your eternity depends on it. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. <laughs>